I'm Taylor Hess with North 40 Fly Shop in Pondre, Idaho. And today we're going to be tying the Isonychia Jig Nymph or Crimson Prince. It's a great pattern for imitating anything from a mahogany dun to an Isonychia slate drake. Uh, the list goes on. It's a great all-purpose pattern. Uh, we're going to be tying it on a jig hook. So for those of you that are interested in tying on jigs or don't really know too much about it, we're going to get you all set up. Gear up, we're going to have a fun tie today. So to start off the Crimson Prince Nymph, I'm starting with a True to Goods uh, upside downy hook. It's a wide gap jig hook. I really like these. Um, it's going to be a eight in, excuse me, an eighth of an inch copper bead slotted tungsten. So we're going to start with a pheasant tail, probably about four to five fibers, and I'm going to tie those in just behind the point of the hook, so they're shooting straight out of the back. And then I'm going to use the pheasant tail to build up a little bit of a body. I'm going to take that just behind that bead trim. And then I'm going to take a vinyl rib. Now what I want to do with this is I'm going to come back to the back of the fly. We're going to tie it in. Vinyl rib has a small crescent shape to it. So you want to make sure when you wrap, you're going to be able to wrap the round side facing upward. I'm going to get that tied in. Really cinch that down. Likes to move. So I'm going to bring my thread back up to the eye. And then I'm going to wrap this forward. Again, you want that round side out. This makes a really nice looking nymphy body. It's going to be a pretty bulky nymph. So once I get all that tied in, I like burying as much of that excess material as possible. So there's only about three wraps in there. That leaves me plenty of room. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dyed red peacock curl two strands. I'm going to tie that in just in front. And I'm just going to wrap that. Build up a little bit of a collar. I want to tighten that the whole way up to the bead. So once we're there, I'm going to turn the fly over. So when you have the fly turned over, we're going to add in some weight bites. And I'm going to tie these in one at a time, makes it a little bit easier. I'm not going to tie them super long just as long as they're about the same length. Normally, jig flies are tied in the round, which means they're symmetrical the whole way around. <clears throat> this fly is gonna tumble in the water, so probably really doesn't matter too much what side they're on, but just for the sake of the jig fly, it's supposed to ride upside down, so I'm gonna have my white piets right on top, just as so. And then we're going to take our thread and we're going to build up a nice little so 
once those are tied in, going to build up a nice collar with our thread. This is why using like a wine, claret, or a red thread goes a long way. Gives it a nice little bright spot of the fly. Once we whip finish, So once we're whip finished, I just added a little bit of UV glue on there. Gonna cure that up. And we're ready to go. So this little UV prints, or sorry, crimson prints, it's a great fall pattern when there's a lot of mahogany duns around. Uh, you'll see them crawling out of the water. Uh, size 14 is generally a good starting point with this pattern. Uh, you can use a bunch of different jig hooks, but I found the lighter wire, true to good hooks, work really well. Um, the wide gap helps you set on fish a little bit easier. I found my hookup rates are a little bit better on wide gap jig hooks. So, but If you have any questions about uh, the crimson uh, prints, stop in at the shop sometime. We'll get you all set up to tie it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time, folks. Thanks for watching.